So funny enough, the first model I painted for this army was Gaspel Fracker. He was the test model. If you want to find out how to paint orcs that look just as awesome as this, then you've come to the right place. Hello and welcome to Incursion Events. My name's Luke and I am joined today by Jack Masters, award-winning commission painter. Jack, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. How are you doing? Hello, Luke. Yeah, I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Jack has kindly agreed to give up some of his time to discuss all about how he's painted his orc army. So stick around to the end of the video to find out exactly how he's done it. Now we're going to get to the, the painting and the orcs in a bit, but introduce yourself, maybe share a bit about your journey into 40k. And Yeah, of course, dude. So I've been in this hobby since I was six years old. So I'm now 32 now, I think. Around Fable of 18. <laughs> uh, so I started playing Working Games Workshop, you know, started very young. I got into the kind of the gaming scene when I was a bit older. Painting side, not so much because the uh, I wasn't really keen on the painting at the time. I still understand how I become a commission painter, but you know, that's how it is. Um, so then I, I kind of went through my life, I just tried out different armies and stuff like that. I picked up Orcs being my main faction for now 13, 14 years now. Started doing more kind of events, so I played more tournaments, etc. Had a bit of a break, not being as active as I, w I was. And then we had the thing that happened during 2020 to 2022, yeah. which we won't speak about because that was awful. Um, but during that time, I decided to pick up painting again. Started going, you know what, I actually want an army to look quite nice on the tabletop. So I just decided to go, you know what, let's just focus on here. Two years now have passed since I probably started doing it and or three years now when I actually officially started and I've now almost got 10,000 points of Orcs which are award winning in multiple avenues from tournaments to events I've got well I can't speak about it yet but there's a future thing coming out which you'll, you will see but I, I can't say anything yet about it and then these last two years kind of got also back into tournament play so a lot more kind of semi competitive events, very casual events like from the Skulls. And yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. So yeah, that's kind of a, a, a brief-ish introduction to who I am in the scene, you could say. Fantastic. I think it's a very impressive feat to get to that level of put the time frame around 2020, that sort of time, to then be punching at that weight in the painting world. It's a, a testament to the quality of what you're putting out there. Very, very impressive. One of the things you touched on there was the fact that you're a commission painter so do you have like a handle or a thing that you go by there where people can try and search for you i'll share a link to any insta or other sites you've got in the, the video description below yeah so if you go on to instagram and just type in that joy of painting so d-a-j-o-y-o-f painting p-a-i-n-t-i-n you'll see my goth logo and that is me. So I kind of had a bit of a nice little spin on the Bob Ross, the joy of painting. Yes. And I saw that and went, you know what, that's that's perfect. That That's my perfect handle. So yeah, if you, you just literally type in the joy of painting and that will be, it will see me on my Instagram. And yeah, the commission was really, the commission stuff was really cool. I was approached a couple of uh, months ago, I think start of this year, asking about, do I do commissions? And I've always said to myself, like I've never do commissions because it just soaked into my own hobby. Mm. But uh, quite frankly with you, Luke, uh, in this day and age, you know, money is good and, yep. you know, any, any extra income can help. So I just thought, you know, I'll give it a go. It's given me the opportunity to do so much more than I would it, than I would normally. So, yeah, I picked it up in 20, in the start of this year. I haven't looked back. So now I'm doing it as a kind of like a side hustle. But the commission books are always open if people need to. For example, I was doing commission work. I shouldn't really be saying this on Christmas Day. Because the guy, because my mate wanted something done mm. for a D and D campaign, I'm with a family in the afternoon. The thing is, I enjoy it. I do enjoy just sitting down, and the therapy it gives me is, 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 you know, you just, you just can't, you just can't beat it. Like you sit down on your desk, paint up, start paying. It's perfect. I love it. You got to do it in a way that works for you, and it sounds like you are aware of what is the balance for yourself, which I think is half the battle. I've seen lots of people that can yeah. burn out, or they take it on thinking it's different experience than what it might tend to be, or they've got to treat it like a nine to five. And I think it's just a little bit of learning, like you say, dive into it, find what works for you, and it sounds like it can be a very rewarding thing to undertake. I've noticed. Absolutely. It hasn't escaped my attention that it's very, very orky themed. The army we're showcasing is obviously they must resonate with you in some yeah. way. So I guess the main question is why orcs? What is it about orcs that speaks to you? <laughs> I always love getting asked these questions. It's great. So like, I remember when I used to, when I was a little babby in Games Workshop and I hear people from the staff members just say like, just imagine an army of hulks. 
And <laughs> it's like, that's always resonated with me. And I just love the fact that no matter what they make, they just create out of what, they just create stuff out of junk. So yep. that kind of made me just love them even more. I have a kind of a soft spot for Gaskell Fracker. So it's like, you know, I've always been a person that always goes against the odds in my personal life. And, you know, if someone says to me, oh, you can't do this. And they're like, fine, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I'll do it instead. It may take me a while, but I'll do it. It really does resonate with me with like how my army plays. So I play all golf pressure because golf's always about the biggest and baddest. You've got like yep. tons of boys, tons of mega knobs. Like, you know, they're, they're perfect. I just love the craziness you can do out of it. So like, you know, I've, I started off with Walt Goffs and then kind of went down the route of elite or commies. And then this year, the year just gone, I decided to pick up, pick up a brand new army, which is my, my Gorka Knights. So Chaos Knight army, but with an orc spin on it, really enjoyed making those knights because it let my creative juices go wild. Is, let's say that. And I've tried to make sure that every single knight that I make is unique in every way. So in the answer to your question, Luke, the reason why Orcs is because I just think they're really cool. I think they're just the macho craziness mad lads of the 41st millennium. <laughs> and uh, I think one story that resonates with me is in one of the, the old books where they had an Orc interrogation procedure. And this uh, tech priest was looking at this Orc slugger and just was like, this this can't fire. There's no there's no bullets. There's no, this shouldn't work. So the guy just, one of the guys just says, give it back to the Orc. He can't do anything with it. York smiles and because he believes it works, it works. He just shoots the tech race in the head. And uh, it just made me go, yeah, that's, that's the army I want. That's the army I want. That's the army I want. Just absolute pure and okay. Uh, not, not good, not evil. Just kind of doing what they think is right and just having a good crumping fight. Absolutely. Brilliant. That was awesome. I hear what you're saying about the knights just putting that all together and I think that speaks as well to what you're saying to the orcs in general. You, the creativity of what you can do with an orc army is unsurpassed. Like I've seen so many different conversions. I mean there was a guy at LGT who had a Necron army that he had. It was all converted orcs. It just looked, yeah. It yeah, looked amazing. Right. It's so different. It's like you really are limited only by what you can cook up in your imagination which is again just so wonderfully orc -y. Other than goths, obviously, was there any kind of particular inspiration? Because you suggested it was uh, during a period of trying to flex your painting muscles and actually make a go of, like you said, making the, an army that you're really proud of and, and looks really pretty on the tabletop. Yeah. So was there anything that you had a vision in mind or any kind of inspiration, anything you were trying to achieve whilst doing this? And do you think you achieved that? So in all honesty with you, Luke, and I'm going to be pretty honest with the audience as well. You know that I've I've gone to events before and I've been nominated for like best sport. I've been nominated for like, you know, podiums and all that stuff. But the one thing that I never, ever did was get nominated for best army. I just wanted to try and do it for myself because I always was that person when I was younger that did not care about painting. I mm. just wanted to get on the tabletop. And I just wanted to play games and just, you know, that was it. No, no on the painting side. Yep. So see if, if I could push myself to get to level because I've seen so many gorgeous painted armies at these events and even the ones that yourself have, have run and they are absolutely phenomenal mm. and people go to these events and a lot a lot of the stigma is people think that you go to these events with armies just to win and that is not the case people will go to these events to play games they will want to go here to experience playing different armies different people different cultures different ways of playing yeah so when i ever hear someone say oh you go to a tournament you must be a competitive player i'm like absolutely not i i mean don't wrong i used to be like we're talking like 12 years ago but now it's all about just enjoyment of the hobby you know i play orcs man like i think there's always been a saying that you can never ever play a salty orc player Never, <laughs> because most people just literally want to have fun. So yeah, get that final piece of that jigsaw puzzle. So it's the inspiration behind the kind of the push for nice. the Orc Army. And I wanted to make sure that I had the cherry pick of any kind of Orc unit I wanted. So if I wanted to go for like a bike army, I could do a bike army. Still a fair way off. Buggies, the more dreadheads, I don't know. There could be, yeah. there could be so much more. Like, yeah. I've very much been a person that enjoys trying new things and that started to approach more different techniques like glazing, actually properly doing dry brushing because I've always been a, not a hater of dry brushing, but I've always managed to get it wrong every time. So this is why dry brushing, you'll only see on my personal models will be on the basing. Mm. Anything else would be like stippling with like a sponge on like the weathering powders, etc. So yeah, with this stuff I've been doing, I've been trying to learn like different techniques, using more contrast paints because some people will always say to me like they want army quick, easy and efficiently. Mm. And, you know, I've said, look, this is the price I will say. 
and they're like, oh, no, actually, that's fine. And, you know, you get to a point where you can use contrast and they're like, this is amazing. And it's like, yeah, just the simple techniques. Simple techniques will get you places and you'll get recognition. Yep. But you know, I've, I've seen many different techniques and I'm looking to increase my repertoire of different painting styles. One of the next things I'm going to try and do is uh, airbrushing Space Marines. Something I've always wanted to try, but always been that kind of, oh, I just don't have the time. I don't mm. really want to. I'd just be focused on something else. And I think there's always a, a learning curve with new techniques. And even something like you say with dry brushing, I think a lot of people can be tricked into thinking these things are simpler than they are. Or you, yeah. you've just dry brushed that as if that's a bad thing. I mean, anyone who's seen any is it Artis Opus videos, Byron, who does the... Uh, the, the, yes, the videos yeah, on that yeah. it's incredible and it just goes to show you that people are constantly pushing you know these techniques and there's always something to learn even with something yes. you think you know you might poo poo and contrast is a big one as well i was guilty of that with the contrast paints when they first came out like i don't need those I was literally like <laughs> what can they possibly do for me i know right from like old school like hobbies like ourselves like we've been we've both been doing this hobby for like years and saying yeah. i don't need contrast this is ridiculous but then, like, actually getting behind it and actually mm. using it is quite interesting. Like, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, this actually makes my work a lot easier. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. It, it's good, man. Like, increasing your hobby skills is always going to make your journey a lot better. And if you ever wanted to pick up, like, another army, you can go, like, ah, bang, I'll do this army and knock it out in maybe two weeks. And, like, go, oh, look, this is awesome on the tabletop. And that's the main thing. Getting it on the tabletop, making you feel that it looks awesome. And that's the main thing. Making sure that you've, like, the work that you put out you are proud of and that's all that I look from my own hobby perspective and my commission stuff as long as the client's happy if that makes sense absolutely this is a corny mantra and there's no doubt yeah so you've probably seen maybe even written in the side of a gym or something it's all about progress and not perfection and I think we've got so many awesome content creators out there that put their finished product and you like in a five minute video and you're like oh my god that's incredible but they haven't shown you the 30 40 50 hours that's gone into it and you're like yeah and it's almost like like an instagram model making someone feel inadvertently bad about themselves because they're not seeing all the hard work that goes into them sculpting their physique and it's the same thing with 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 warhammer miniatures in 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 a way you get this idea that what you create must look like what you see on the internet and it's just not true just curious what you said about different styles and things that you're making a conscious effort to try and add to your repertoire as you said when you're approaching a commission job do you have like a specific process and is there the adding of these techniques is that something that you found a challenge or are there other challenges that you've encountered and has there been any ways that you've overcome those challenges as well yeah so my my first commission i ever did was for a friend of mine he wanted just he just wanted some custodian guard done well my first commission i wanted to make sure that they were to the point to the t and they look amazing I did get a bit stressed out because I wanted to make sure that they looked to quality, that I would look at them and go, yeah, this is this is awesome, this is fantastic. Yeah. And when I gave them to my client, he he loved them. He thought they were fantastic and and he was so grateful. So I was like, that's fantastic. So that's all I wanted to see. But then funny enough, the next time round, I saw another way of doing this commission and I went, okay, right. Let me see if I can just switch it up a little bit. And I did it. In half the amount of time that I, I said to my mate, and he was like, these are, these look better than the stuff I put more effort into. Oh, wow. And I just went, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, this is ridiculous. I could have been doing so much less. But he was so happy with both products. And they were matched. And, you know, he's come back to me countless times. And my most recent client, he's now become a regular. Nice. And uh, I, that's a big step. Like when you finally get, when you're a commission painter, like even if it's full time or like as a side hustle, when you get your regular client, it's, you know, you've kind of not, not made it, but like, you know, for a fact that you've got to treat this person with absolute respect because he knows that you are, you're good for one, you're doing him a service. And finally, your name is getting put up there. So yeah. even if it's just like at local events, you're still finding people like come to me and say, that army is fantastic. That model is wicked. And I'm loving it. Like, it's so much fun, Luke. And I try, I very much, it's very hard for me to take thank yous and like, you know, you're doing yeah. amazing. This is great. Like compliments and stuff. And I find it really difficult. So like, for example, there's been internally in my head when I won my last event, like there was, there was part of me wanted to like raise this like throw of skulls up in the air and just like shout wah. But my inner like anxiety was like, no, don't make a fool of yourself. But if it happens again, I will be doing that. Um, but no, I, I love it. I think 
having that constant creativity and also having all the choices to make. So I've I've had one commission where I've I've been asked to make it like a box art, which I've done, and I've been asked by people to do this model a pink lancer. So I made him a pink lancer, and he wanted his sort of like. He's kind of pushing towards a kind of Empress Children feel when they have hopefully will eventually drop out in the next in the near future. But I'm also looking forward to seeing how he wants more Mr. Blobby Beast of Nurgle because uh, <laughs> I actually really enjoyed making and painting those. They were gorgeous. Like I've never had experienced those models. They were really fun to paint, and they all with contrast. It was all with contrast. Amazing. And the, fact, and, the, and the look on this guy's face was like, this is amazing. This is something I would never do. And they're like, dude, it's just, it's very simple. I can teach you. But he's a kind of person who was like, I love, the, I will play the game. I don't want to make it or paint it. That's what I pay you for. Mm. And I'm there like, okay, that's cool. And I know, I know there are some people in this, in this world that do it. And they get their enjoyment out of gaming. That's fine. Like, and I'm happy to give a service that makes them happy to have, be proud to have stuff on the tabletop that looks like what they want in their heads. Awesome. Is there anything, any particular project that stood out for you that you've enjoyed the most? And also be really keen to hear anything in the future that you've got coming up. It might be for the meme team as well. Yeah, no, so I love doing the Mr. Bobby Beast and Nogle. They were really fun, both of them. I think in terms of my favourite model that I've done commission-wise, it was a off-brand Beholder uh, from D&D. And I've never done any D&D models before in my life. I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. I'll see how it, I'll see if I like it. And it was really fun. But no, I really enjoyed the off-brand Beholder. For my personal project, I finished off my Beast Snaggers for the uh, Nottingham GT this weekend. And as a treat, I decided to paint a Orc Beast Boss because ha- he was on my shelf for two and a half years. And he has just, he's just been like going, paint me, please. Mm-hmm. I've literally been here for I've been here for years. <laughs> so I, I picked him up and he literally, all, all he had was, he had a Xenophil highlight on him and base green on his skin. And then the space of six and a half hours, he was completed and I generally really enjoyed it. And it was a nice palette cleanser. And I know you're probably thinking like, how is this man painting orcs? <laughs> and then like doing a palette cleanser of a character, which is an orc. And they're like, <laughs> because it's something different. It's something that like, when you go from model paying, like you're doing, because I do obviously army, I, I do army pay. I don't like go on demon level because that's way out of my league for the time being. For the time being, for now, I will be one day. Yeah, one day. But I, you can go from my like, army paying to like you know your rank and file miniature and going you know your grots, your orcs, your snaggers and stuff. When you go to characters, it just makes it a little bit more different. And I genuinely loved painting that model. It just looks really cool. Like I don't care about the rules. Like I know the rules could be. A bit better, but I generally love that model. 2023's model, hands down, had to be one of my Gorkonites, like the whole lot. Gorkonites were just, I I loved them so much. Like the, <laughs> the hours I had trying to put together this tyrant, which I've called Sir Boom. And <laughs> it's uh, it's an orc that literally just wants to fire and just shoot stuff. Yeah, it, I loved it. But then took it to a tournament and he was absolutely crud he, he just like <laughs> 595 points that literally whiffs his attack rolls and goes i've put like 25 hours of painting of my time into you <laughs> so yeah after the abysmal stuff that so boom happened i was like great that's perfect thank you very much <laughs> but i did manage to get third place in best army so i was on the moon because that's what i wanted to kind of go for etc in terms of our club, so for those of you that don't know who we are, so we are the GR meme team. We were featured in White Dwarf. Can't remember the exact, but we were featured in White Dwarf. If you go on Instagram, it will be on there. <laughs> so we were featured in White Dwarf. We begun in 2022 in our local FLGS, and then we decided to kind of make it as a club. We go on tour, as, as it were, <laughs> up and down the country to different events that we can make. So 2023 was the year of kind of our expansion. So we really pushed going to events, getting our names out there. We managed to run our first event. Uh, we didn't burn the place down, which was fantastic. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> we we got a few things that I I could have done better from the from the admin side, it's like sending my sending all the uh, the attendees that didn't know where the venue was to my house. Excellent. That was fantastic. <laughs> that, was, that was something that I will definitely update the rules pack with. Love it. Uh, next time. But, um, you know, so we, we really we really were really proud of what we did. And in 2024, we are aiming to do four events this year. So we've got doubles, which is currently on sale still when this recording goes out. 
but we have tickets remaining it's all the event details can be found on our link tree on our instagram and we've got a facebook page as well we will be doing after that a uh, tournament that we are we are known for which is called chonky highlander <laughs> so it has the highlander format but you must take a Titanic unit. Must do. That's one of the, the, <laughs> the key things there. It's very. It's a very like thing that we kind of created back in the day. to about two years ago. We wanted to redo it ever since, and we just like we just invite everyone to see if they want to enjoy it or not. And then we've got two more, which is in the future, which we can't talk about yet because we're still planning those. But one of them will be the Grand Slam. So we're going to have every year the GR Mean Team Grand Slam will be the WrestleMania of the GR Mean Team. The event that starts over again for our kind of year. And we're going to try and make that a big thing where we're at. And then we obviously we do podcasts, um, but uh, we, are, we are going to be touring all events this year. We're doing, I think we're trying to do one a month up and down the country as best we can. We are looking forward to meeting new people, blessing them with the, the words of our mascot, Terry the Sun Squig. Uh, <laughs> maybe a bit cross-eyed, but he's, yeah. he, has, he has one brain cell, so he is uh, <laughs> he's happy, which is all that matters. I'm loving it. I'm loving having to play different people. I'm loving giving people so much more attention to like how to continue painting, how to do this. I would never expected us to have done a 24-hour stream for Mind, which was back when we were in our old FLGS, uh, and we raised £3,000 for Mind as a mental health charity. And I would never expected that from, from this bunch of people that we've accumulated. Yeah, and that's what we're trying, that's what we're doing, man, and that's what matters most. But no, that's, to answer your long question, that, that's the answer. Personally, I'm looking forward to what we can do in the future and we are hoping and this is a big hope that we're going to try going across the pond in 2025 Ooh. to Adepticon to again share our views on uh, Terry the Sunsquig and uh, go from there so that is hopefully going to happen next year in 2025 and we're really looking forward to it but again it's all down to this kind of big adults and going like you know can we physically do this can we you know have we got the time etc etc so there's a lot of plans on the horizon and looking forward to seeing how things plan out and, i'm sure you'll work something I out i mean it's, yeah. it's probably a little bit like herding cats sometimes everyone's got their own real life and you know, yeah can't yeah, play no can't idea. play games all the time can we sadly <laughs> yeah yeah you have no idea <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's uh as i said i've had my time with the sun I've enjoyed everything about it. You know, it's now my time to kind of not take, not even take a step back, but it's trying to kind of show what I truly value about being a player mm. and and, part, and be part of a team. And that's why I try want to want to push with the GR Mean team. And so far, I am proud of every single one of those members because we're doing things the right way, and we want to make sure that anyone that plays us truly has a great experience. And that's what kind of the GR Mean team stand for enjoyment and just having a good time and obviously sharing memes because that's always a win <laughs> um, that's awesome very very amicable mindset i like that um, absolutely the last thing i wanted to glean if you wouldn't mind just kind of walking through some step how you've kind yeah, of man. um yeah, yeah achieved of the awesomeness of, of the goths so funny enough the first model i painted for this army was guy school fracker he was the test model so he was the test model amazing he, <laughs> He was the test model. I uh, I know he, when people kind of are, when people find out that he was the test model, and they're like, yeah, if I went back and did Gascor again, I don't know what, I don't know what he'd look like. <laughs> I, think he, <laughs> I, I know for a fact that he would look a lot, a, a little bit different. I But again, that's something that I may do for the future for a golden deer, but we shall see. So yeah, I was at Iron Skull uh, in 2019. Oh, 20, oh, 2020 before the pan, before obviously the, 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 the plague. <laughs> and um, basically, I got talking to a guy. I don't know. I don't know who the hell he was. I just saw some green and was like, "Oh, that green's really cool." And he was like, "Yeah, that's my scheme." And they're like, "Dude, this is amazing. This is a wicked scheme." And he kind of, he very kindly gave me the scheme. Only after I found out that he was the one that painted the green at Games Workshop. Shut the front door. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, this is amazing. Like, I just I was like, "Ah, oh, I'm in awestruck." Like, I don't. But the thing is, I didn't even get the guy's name, Luke. I didn't even get his name. I, look, I remember his face. He told me the scheme. So basically, what I did was, uh, it was a stage, it was, well, this, this may make you go a little bit insane, but <laughs> my skin tone is a seven-stage highlight. Is a seven-stage, I, I should say seven-stage process. Okay. So you base coat the entire model Elysian Green or airbrush it. Now, this is the trick. This is the trick. So then, to get like the dark recesses, you use either 
Caliban Green glaze, or I just went, no, I'm not doing that. That takes too much time. <laughs> so I got I got Alt Flesh. So I decided to get Alt Flesh and use Contrast Lamin Medium to bring it down. Ah. And it basically did the same thing. So that's when I started using Contrast in my own painting. So then I did Contrast Lamin. It was a, basically a wash of Alt Flesh over the skin. Then you re-highlight of Volition Green. Then you re-highlight on the top, say, of Volition Green, mix of Robin Camo. Then yeah. it's Robin Camo. Then it's open camo mixed with flayed one flesh, and then it's flayed one flesh on the knuckles, the raised areas, the mouths, the ears, and that's it. So yeah, my skin is a seven stage process. It's now insane. I know that sounds ridiculous. However, you look at an orc model and you tell me that it's not based on their skin. Like, you look at any decent orc models, and you will see that their skin is defiant, because it's mm. you've got so many different avenues. You've got, like, dark skin, light skin. You've got, like, the grubby, grim, dark stuff. But I've gone for, like, the proper cartoon style, mm. or, like, artwork that I've seen. The other bits that I've been asked about is my black. So for, like, mega armor, heavy armor, that kind of stuff. It's a really simple color scheme. So you base coat it Corvus Black, on the the whole thing so airbrush it or just corvus black it from a brush then it's uh, a wash of non oil to kind of really bring it down to like pretty very very dark and then it's dark reaper as an edge highlight and then it's fenris and gray over the top and again it's a lot of time because i've done 12 mega knobs all with every single edge every single highlight has been done it took me ages however once they're done obviously they just they're just, I love them. I love them to bits. And honestly, Luke, the, the trick is, after any of, after that, and this is the secret, everything else is a base wash layer. That's it. Everything else is that simple. So I pick two colours, which are dominant, which would normally be the skin, and then something else. So it'll be arm, like the armour for a tank. And the rest is all just base wash layer. That was a trick taught to me by James Tarot, so the Tarot model maker. Wow. Just, just, make, just make things simple, mate. There is no <laughs> point. You know, here's my army. I've got to, I'm going to spend all this time doing it. And they're like, if you're painting an army for a tournament, you want it to look great. You don't want to lose your soul, man. Like, no. <laughs> it, it literally drained, it drained me. Like, doing all these characters drained me. Yeah. But the thing is, you've got to enjoy it. And once I was on my... 40th slugger boy i was going i was dying i'm not gonna lie i was literally dying however once you finally see them on the tabletop with that lovely martian like orangey color contrasting that green and black you just go yeah i did that and that's what makes you go yeah that's sick that's awesome mm. and then speaking of the um the basing because i know a lot of people have kind of gone yeah jake jack that basing is fantastic and it's something i found online i just typed in martian orange basing stuff and i found i literally i think it was like a dead instagram account because i haven't i haven't right. used that years. and it was basically just talked about like getting these bases and, it, and this and this originally was just on a plain base no cork or anything but i love adding cork to models just because just for orcs it just gives them that little bit of height and makes them a little bit more intimidating yeah. and the process for that is a, again a little bit of an expensive one you have to go through texture paint like a mad lad so you do it's martian <laughs> iron earth martian iron crust you wash it right and flesh laid you dry brush it jacara orange and this is the problem the final step is you dry brush it kindle flame and there is no paint in the games workshop range that looks like that anymore because they got did they discontinue it unfortunately oh okay so when, I, when i found that out i panic brought 20 tubs <laughs> so i i have got enough kindle flame to keep me going for at least 25 years if they, okay. if they bring if they ever bring out more stuff i'm sure that there are like there's like a vallejo mix and match i could i could use but i just when I, i'm a person that likes continuality so i yeah. just i just like using the same thing over and over again and yeah man, i've put a lot of time and effort into these boys and one of my greatest achievements was going from literally again like i said at the beginning not caring about painting to just one just just one the game to actually taking the time appreciating the value that painting can do for your mental health mm. and just switching off and then finally making that leap to commission painting and having gone through that process 
it's really strange. Like I would, if you ask the younger me, you say like you are going to be a commission painter, you are going to have an army which is award winning. You would have a lot more going ahead of you. I don't know how he'd take it. <laughs> mm. I don't know what he would take it. Like he. I, I just I love it I, I love this hobby as a community and I genuinely love just seeing what people are doing it's really cool and I appreciate you going through the painting um, techniques as well and, and hearing about the, the, the mean team and I'm not going to say it's not a cult the religious figurehead of the squig is yeah, uh... <laughs> yeah. I, uh, it's, uh, well, it's not the first time it's been mentioned though funny enough I was actually I was painting yesterday and I was uh, I saw on Netflix that there was a, a new series to, to the show that I was watching called how to become a cult leader? <laughs> uh, I was, I may or may not have been taking notes. Just saying. <laughs> um, the fact that I feel comfortable to be my true self is something that I would never have done in a normal games workshop. And the people that are part of this team generally make me feel like I'm a kid again because it's it's a group that I wished Games Workshop still had in their stores. And I'm not saying that there's other stores I've been to and they're fantastic because they are, they're doing fantastically well under sheer amounts of pressure from places in Games Workshop. Yeah. That's none of my business. But team is just like it was back in the 90s. Like, sorry, like the early 2000s where it, we didn't have a care in the world. We just wanted to roll dice, talk just absolute nonsense and just enjoy our games the sky's the limit you know so like i want to see what we can do i reckon i want to see what we can eventually get on to doing go behind the scenes to see what we can do but yeah it's it's great man it's really cool that you're doing more and more and just as you say just seeing how far you can take things and it's nice to hear like they're from like the humble beginnings of it all as well because if yeah. you think like if you just decided to just not bother like how how much different would your life be and it's just crazy so no more power to you it's awesome Awesome well, of you, man. Like you started up your encouragement events, and it's going really well. Yeah, no, it's, thank you. It's going really well. I'm like, you know, you should be really proud of yourself, man. Like it, Brighton, uh, and I'm sure you're you're great at Woking. Used to be like the hubs of 40k. Yeah. yeah. And time is time to change, but the war is always still strong, and they should, <laughs> and no matter what, there should always be a place of friendly gaming and competitive gaming in both those places. And you should be really proud, man. You know, encouragement no, is doing really well, and like you're knocking out events here and there. And I'm really happy that you've been, you've already got jumped on the bandwagon for the old world as well. Yeah. Because I'm also like, you know, I've tried to like get the young ones from the team to get into the old world. And like only like three of us know what the old world was. And it, it's crazy, dude. Like yeah. showing my age. <laughs> it, it's crazy. <laughs> but you know, like you keep going and you keep trying to be positive and bring in happiness and good stuff to the community. And that's what matters in Warhammer 40k and Warhammer player. That's, that's how I see it. Nice one. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Thank you for coming on. Thank you very much for having me, Luke. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. That's all right. Awesome. Really appreciate you sharing your painting advice and your experiences about commission painting and the GR meme team and all that good stuff. Yeah, man. Links in the video description below to everything that Jack's talked about today. Please do check them out. Show some support for Jack. He does a lot for the wargaming community, including some really awesome charity work. I can't big it up enough. It's really what the hobby is all about. And it's great to be able to have Jack on and share all that good stuff. In the meantime, if you've liked this video, please do give it a like. Consider subscribing if you want to stay up to date with all the videos that we're putting out here at Incursion Events. This is just the first of many spotlights on the community showcasing some of the awesome hobby that I know is out there and there is going to be plenty more to come we've only really scratched the surface but until next time keep rolling those dice thanks for watching and stay tuned for more